Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Manhole. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with a young girl on her way home. She is talking on the phone to her worried father, but she assures him that she will be home shortly and hangs up. She crosses a deserted street, the street light flashes, and she spots someone following her. When she turns around, she sees a dark figure and starts to run in panic. Suddenly the light goes out and she accidentally falls into a manhole. Someone drags her and locks her in a dark room. The scene shifts to a deaf girl who calls her sister, Yan, to ask when she will return home. Yan says that she will have to work late today and orders her to stay at home with the door locked. Returning to the girl who fell into the manhole, we see that she wakes up and starts looking around. In the process, a group of men preparing to go on their lunch break come across a human head, but they don't stop to investigate, believing that it is simply a dummy. At that moment, the trapped girl finds herself in a kind of underground laboratory, and suddenly a handcuffed boy grabs her feet. Hearing the commotion, the kidnapper slowly wakes up. He is basically a psychopath with a traumatic past. The kidnapper ties her up in a chair while she begs him not to kill her. After that, he cuts her hair and tells that from now on, they must stay together. The scene ships to the deaf girl, who doesn't stay at home as her sister has ordered, but instead chooses to wait for her at the bus station. Yan is irritated when she sees her sitting alone and scolds her because it is late at night and dangerous outside. Through a flashback, we realize that the sisters have a special bond since their mother's death. Later, they walk home, crossing the same street where the girl was kidnapped at the beginning of the film. In fact, we find out that the kidnapper is watching the street through CCTV cameras. In a news report, we learn that in the past six months, the number of kidnappings in the city has increased, and the police are having difficulty handling the cases. Somewhere in the city, a taxi driver circulates fires about his daughter, who has been missing for several days. In fact, she is the very first kidnapped girl in the film. The taxi driver has no intention of giving up and continues to circulate the flyers, but people do not seem to care. At one point, a man passes by the taxi driver and picks up a flyer. He walks away without a word and soon enters a building. He then attaches it to a wall already plastered with missing person flyers, suggesting that he is indeed the kidnapper himself. Later one evening, Yan celebrates her birthday at home with her sister, who has written a letter in which she promises to listen to her and respect her all the time. Meanwhile, the kidnapper celebrates the birthday of the kidnapped girl and asks her to blow out the candles. Later, he serves her a piece of cake that falls on her skirt. The girl says that her father will find her soon. The kidnapper listens to her and it triggers a flashback in which his violent father burned his entire family many years earlier. Following the incident, he despised his father and hid in the culverts. As the years went by, he became a psychopath who enjoyed inflicting pain on others. In reality, he kidnapped and killed many people to create a new family for himself, which is why he told the girl that they would stay together forever. The next day, the taxi driver goes to the police station to inquire about his missing daughter, but the police don't seem to take the matter seriously and tell him to be patient while the investigation is ongoing. When he hears the answer, he gets agitated. Another detective comes out of nowhere to calm him down, but it turns out to be one of his friends who is involved in this investigation. In the next scene, the kidnapper pastes the victim's faces on a group photo, fantasizing that he is creating a big family. That night, the taxi driver gets his detective friend drunk so that he can examine the USB and view CCTV footage to find information about his missing daughter. The next day, the detective wakes up and looks for his friend, but the taxi driver is nowhere to be found. Instead of him, he discovers a wall full of photos and documents of his daughter and realizes that he has been investigating all night. Later, he discovers that he has taken the USB and the gun and senses that something terrible is about to happen, so he immediately goes to look for him. Meanwhile, another officer arrives at the manhole to examine a broken electricity pole. He finds a strange wire and checks the manhole cover. As he gets closer, he sees some woman's hair at the top of the manhole. He decides to go to take a look, and meanwhile, the kidnapper keeps an eye on him via CCTV. Once underground, the officer notices blood on the walls and a shoe. Suddenly, he hears someone nearby, but soon after, he falls into the kidnapper's trap. Then, the kidnapper quickly covers his face with a plastic bag, causing him to pass out and die. In the meantime, the detective is still looking for the taxi driver and is still worried about what his friend may do. The scene moves down the street to a couple having an argument. In the end, the man leaves, but the woman gets her heel stuck in the manhole cover. Meanwhile, the kidnapper is observing the woman from a distance. As she tries to pull her heel out, he gets closer and closer, and ultimately, he knocks her out. Also that evening, the deaf girl writes to her sister that she will meet her at the bus stop. 
Meanwhile, the taxi driver, who is watching the CCTV, sees the deaf girl and thinks she is his missing daughter, so he chases her. He almost runs her over, but she ignores him and goes to pick up the bottle she dropped. At the same time, the deaf girl sees the kidnapper dragging the woman's body down the manhole. Suddenly, Jan calls her, and the kidnapper realizes that someone is watching him. The deaf girl ignores the call and runs away. Jan begins to worry and continues to call her. Suddenly, a video call flashes and shows a blurry image, making her even more worried. She quickly calls the police, but they ignore her bullshit. The taxi driver continues to follow the deaf girl, unaware that the kidnapper is also chasing her. She hides and grabs the phone, but the kidnapper approaches and quickly catches her. Jan, however, realizes something is wrong and uses GPS to track her location until she arrives at the kidnapper's house. In the process, the kidnapper puts the taxi driver's daughter in a bathtub and wraps her in a plastic bag to disinfect her. She begins to fidget, so he beats her violently, knocking her unconscious. On the other side, Jan reaches the kidnapper's lab and immediately calls her sister. As she gets closer, she hears the phone ringing from inside the hole, so she decides to go inside. Meanwhile, the kidnapper hears footsteps and decides to move the body of the taxi driver's daughter somewhere else. As he drags the body, the man starts whistling, and Jan hears him. She hides in the shadows, but when he passes by her and throws the girl's body to the ground, he sees her. The man quickly grabs her by the hand and continues to drag her. In the next scene, the taxi driver finds the manhole, where the kidnapper is hiding and ventures inside. He comes across a huge pit full of bodies and immediately calls his detective friend, babbling something about the bodies and the security camera. The detective immediately goes to check the recordings and sees the officer who went down the manhole a few days ago. Meanwhile, Yang continues to wander around, and at one point, she notices a figure approaching. She quickly runs and hides in the stinking water of the canal. Moments later, the kidnapper arrives and strikes the water with a crowbar, but finds no one because Jan has made it in time to hide in another place. A little later, the deaf girl wakes up, only to find a boy, who appears to be very hungry, trying to steal her chocolates. She approaches him and generously gives him one. The kidnapper appears out of nowhere and chokes her until she passes out. The detective tries to find the kidnapper's precise location, but his superiors do not listen to him when he calls for backup. In the process, the deaf girl wakes up with her hands tied and manages to free herself while the kidnapper sleeps. As she walks, she accidentally hits an empty can and wakes up the kidnapper. As he starts counting, she starts running. Immediately after turning off the lights, he frees the boy and orders him to catch her. At that moment, Jan is crawling in the vent and sees her sister running away and calls out to her. But the girl, being deaf, cannot hear her and keeps walking until she meets the taxi driver. She is startled and runs away, crossing paths with Jan soon after. They try to run away together, crossing a ventilation pipe and reaching a subway. Despite screaming for help, no one can hear them. Meanwhile, the police officers check a manhole cover and hear something coming from inside, which turns out to be a woman calling for help. Later, they rescue her, and the detective rushes into the hole. Suddenly, the other police officer is dragged inside by the kidnapper. The woman starts screaming in terror as the kidnapper comes out and approaches the car. He smashes the car window and kills her, after which he throws her body onto a pile of dead bodies. Meanwhile, Jan and her sister escape to another area. But while Jan manages to escape, her sister is caught by the kidnapper. She desperately screams for help, but no one hears her, and the kidnapper takes her sister away. Jan goes outside to ask people for help, but everyone ignores her. Eventually, she takes a crowbar and decides to go out to find her alone. Unfortunately, she is also apprehended shortly afterward. Later, Yang wakes up with her sister in the kidnapper's den. When he checks on them, they pretend to be asleep and then attempt to escape while he's preparing a chemical combination. When he discovers that they have escaped again, he sets out to find them. They hide behind a closet, and when he approaches, they throw it at him. The deaf girl manages to get away, but the kidnapper orders the boy to chase her. In the process, Jan is unable to escape because the man is grabbing her leg. Enraged, he prepares to hit her with a crowbar, but she finds a taser and uses it against him. Jan then flees in search of his sister. At the same time, the boy finds the deaf girl, but instead of stopping her, he helps her escape after she gives him the last chocolate. The boy takes her back to the kidnapper's lab, and through the cameras, the deaf girl notices that the kidnapper is approaching Jan, so she turns on the lights. Wearing night vision goggles with the light on, the kidnapper can no longer see anything, allowing Jan to run away. The boy grabs the deaf girl's hand, and they run away. Meanwhile, the taxi driver reaches the kidnapper's den and finds a body wrapped in plastic hanging from the ceiling. 
He bursts into tears when he discovers that the face is that of his daughter. He gets furious and starts to make a mess. But when he looks at the camera, he sees the kidnapper and decides to chase him. At that moment, the boy and the deaf girl cross paths with Jan. Soon after, the kidnapper appears and attacks them with a crowbar. Fortunately, the taxi driver arrives in time and knocks the kidnapper to the ground. A fight ensues, during which the taxi driver shoots him in the stomach with his gun. But this doesn't stop him, and the two continue to beat each other violently. The taxi driver manages to get the upper hand for a moment, but the kidnapper starts talking about his daughter, distracting him. Then the kidnapper takes the crowbar and hits him hard in the head, stunning him. Nevertheless, the driver manages to grab the gun and shoots it several times, but misses him, only causing a tremendous explosion that throws a manhole cover into the air. Soon after, the detective comes out in fear, calling for help. The kidnapper, still alive, goes to the lab and injects himself with morphine. Jan finds a way out, but her sister wants to save the boy who helped her. He refuses to go with them, so she thanks him, and then they run away. Before they get outside, they must go through the manhole that leads to the kidnapper's lab. As Jan encourages her sister to go up, the kidnapper has already woken up. He grabs a chair and is about to hit Jan, but she dodges it. Broken pieces of the chair fall on top of the deaf girl, knocking her down. In the process, the flammable liquid starts coming out of an overturned container. The deaf girl wakes up and approaches the boy, who holds her still as soon as he sees the kidnapper. He approaches the deaf girl to strike her with the crowbar, but the boy defends her with his own hand. The man then prepares to hit her once again, but Jan steps in and is hit in the back. He is about to kill Jan, but she hastily lights a lighter and the chemical catches fire. The kidnapper, who has already been doused with chemicals, is quickly devoured by the flames. As a result, the fire spreads and Jan, being exhausted and wounded, cannot escape and dies. The taxi driver arrives and takes the keys off the ground to open the lock and save the deaf girl. The next day, the police discover numerous victims, not only in the huge pit, but also on the dining table, set up like a family dining together. The movie ends with the deaf girl on her way to the hospital, when she finds her sister's drop ring. Meanwhile, the taxi driver arrives and hugs the poor girl, comforting her from a deadly trauma in life. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.